Bom dia a todos, bem-vindos à divulgação de resultados do quarto trimestre de 2022 e o consolidado. Welcome to Muito prazer, a gente. Spreading up the results. If you don't know me, I'm Juliana Max. I'm part of the communication team. And it's a pleasure to be with you. This transmission is being recorded and will be available in our relation, in our investor relation website and our YouTube channel, youtube.tourofino.com. Afterwards, we're going to have a Q&A, and if you want to participate, please write a question in your Q&A. We have a legal advisor, a legal disclaimer that I will read to you. This presentation has declaration about future events that are subject to risks and uncertainties. These declarations have beliefs and assumptions from our administration, information in which the company has access. Declaration of future events include our intentions, beliefs, or expectations, such as the ones from the board members and directors of the company. The highlights about this information regard the future also include information about operational results that are possible or assumed, as well as declarations that will include the words believe, can, will, Continuous waits, foresees, intends, plans, or estimates are similar expressions. The declarations about the futures are not guaranteed. They involve risks, uncertainties, and assumptions because they are regarding future events involving circumstances that might or might not happen. The results for shareholders might be different from the ones expressed or suggested by the declarations regarding the future. A lot of the factors that will determine those results are beyond our capacity of control. To start the presentations, we count on the CEO, Clever Gomes, and on Marcelo Silva, financial and IR director. To finish the presentation rounds, I pass the floor to Kleber Gomes. Good morning, good morning, Ju, good morning, everyone. It is a pleasure to be here in this event that will mark the end of our year of 2022. And when writing our annual report and our message in the sustainability which is released i was reflecting about those past three years which is the uh, time i've been on the presidency with the new board i started in 2020 we have done three exercises with this new board and i was very satisfied to see we had relevant growth we have grown 68 percent on the last three years we are growing double digits high numbers and more than that with profitability with good indicators and marcelo will show more details we had a record of cash flow we have low debt with good quality so from the financial point of view we are very excited with the results presented knowing we still have a lot to do and a lot of room for growth the good part of the reflection is on the how we achieved those results and when we started the management the main aims would be the company that grows the most, the most admired in Latin America, with the best organizational uh, environment, the one that launches more products. So we have been going for these objectives and looking back, it's been three years of awards and acknowledgement 
dia a dia da empresa, eu vejo as pessoas felizes de estar And on a daily basis I see people happy to work here. It's been a year that people got bonuses. The employees that were most dedicated, we have a strong culture. And we've been acknowledged by uh, organs. We were the best company on the Great Place to Work Award. We are on the best 150 companies to work. People are how we achieve our results. So that's why I have this position with our employees, our partners in the communities. We have done a lot of things on those years in 2022. We are launching products at a strong level. You have many things yet to come. Our teams are working with research and development and new businesses and all the support teams. I will mention about those launches. And we have been evolving on the ESG strategic theme, which is very relevant. It's not something new for Orofino. We have always dedicated for ESG. In 2022, we had strong revolutions, and this is the third year we have done an integrated sustainability report and with the financial demonstrations. This is a big difference in the market. We are taking our information of sustainability to the market. I will detail this more. Talking more about the acknowledgement on the how of the good deliveries. We are the best company of agribusiness in Brazil. We are the best pharmaceutical to work by FIA, including the human pharma uh, pharmaceutical companies. We got the Agro Leite Award, which is for uh, milk agribusiness. We got as best company, uh, best company, the Golden Bowl. Best company uh, from from the farm. Second place on the 100 Open Corps, a rank for the companies that work with startups. We are doing this work with startups supporting our technological improvement, supporting our business of products. We have been recertified by the Mais Integridade Board. We are the only a veterinary and pharmaceutical company with that CEO. This is, this is regarding integrity, ethics, and compliance. And lastly, we have looked a lot into our customer service, and we, have, we are the best company for Reclame uh, Aqui, a complaint website. We don't want to be there, but we have had some situations, and we have a great level of service, and we we have been awarded in a company as the best customer service in the market. I could even say more. I always go to Glassdoor and we have an acceptance rate, an indication level of 4.7%, 475 of acknowledgement of the company. So the how is always important. Our words are not the ends, but they know we are at the right path. So I'm very excited about it. Talking a bit more about product launches, we have had in 2022 launches that were very important for production animals. Some of them were more towards the end of the year, so we will harvest uh, that now. We launched tub locks and antimicrobial. It's a product that has entered our market, and we are sure that we will contribute for the future results. We're always following trends regarding our planning, strategic planning from 2019, and we are complying with it. We have the natural additives for um, birds and swines. We have a rationalization of the uses of antimicrobians. 
We are bringing productivity to the chain following the trends of the One Health that we always mention. Those were the launches. I will mention a bit. I'll mention a bit about our launches for companion animals. For companion animals, we have launched Beniv, an innovative product. The first opioid this is the first time we are working with this molecule in the veterinary market. This was the this was in the f regulatory fast track. It was launched in the end of the year. It's being introduced and will help a lot about the practice of animal treatments. We have mentioned with you about our intentions to explore more markets, growing our line, using our channels, and we have used a lot of supplements. And those supplements have some support for therapeutic training with the lines of products that we have. Sometimes they are recurrent use products. They are adding value for our customer and our company. So we have launched that line and we have more launches to come. And we have many products that were launched, totaling 18 launches in the year of 2022. That objective that we had of growing for product launches, we are complying very well. And we know as a growth road, improving international relationships in Latin America, we have constituted in the past in our subsidiaries in Mexico and Colombia. Mexico is the second biggest market of animal health. Colombia is the third. We are going well, but we had very few registered products in Mexico, Colombia, and the other countries in Latin America that we work with distribution. So we are doing a big effort of registering products. We had 68 approvals of registrations. Some products are uh, repeat. And more than that, we work with about 200 of new protocols registered for 2022 that will keep contributing for our expansion in Latin America. We are excited about our regulatory work for strategic partnerships. Going into ESG, 2022 was the year that we have revisited our materiality, where we involved all of our interest chain, so we can uh, issue an opinion and invite our efforts. We left at work with six material teams, which are uh, well-being, innovation, and research, management of the supply chain, well-being of people, and food safety. This is so aligned to our strategic planning that was commented last year, is all aligned to our commitment with ODSs, it's aligned also with our path of development. When we talk about caring for people, for example, item five, well-being and valuing people. When we talk about common well-being, we're talking about innovation. When we're talking about supply chain management, we are always looking at all angles. And I want to highlight I want to highlight uh, the publishing of our integrated report. It has all of our financial, it's not just sustainability. And I want to thank our team for the effort, for the work. This is a well done report. I want to thank our team because we could deliver that report in March. 
It's 130 pages of information. This is done with a lot of information, a lot of quality information, considering uh, the year of 2020. This was included as the best in the category for uh, the word of Brasca, of companies that have revenue over 3 million. We have it there with a QR code in our page. So we can use all the information for the publics of interest. This is a conquer of the company. And reflecting, and we have a change in the societary position. Our investors, the analysts of the market, they use it to follow up with the participation that BNS Parma has since 2007. There was the, there was the possibility of uh, leaving the partnership and we had the good information. A surprise was not much of a surprise of Mitsui joining us, the four, fourth biggest conglomerate in Japan. Investments of a, over a hundred and ten billion dollars, more than a hundred and thirty invested companies. We have a, a business of agricultural benefits, and they are showing the trust in our in our board in our business plan. So, we want to welcome Mitsui, and we are sure that with the influence and the relevance of Mitsui in the Asian market, we can open a new way, we can exploit that Asian market, looking for uh, technology from there. This is a new, a recent uh, entrance, but we believe this can be even better when we work with Mitsui. We're going to have some counselors, one director that will report to me, appointed by Mitsui, that will be working towards this expansion to Asian countries. We have people from the structure of Mitsui looking into our potentialities there. I went to Asia with Mitsui, getting in touch with people, getting to know the structure. I was very impressed. I had that view, but I was very impressed. And I was very impressed after this visit uh, through Asia. We have a lot of work in front of us. It is a competitive market. We have very capable competitors. And we are doing quality work. We are finishing three years, three solid years. And more important than the how, more important than the why is the how. So now going back into the Q&A, I'll be back for Q&A, but going back to Jules so she can conduct our conference. Obrigada, Kleber. Thank you, Kleber. If we can close Kleber's mic. I also made available in our chat the direct link to our report. We have the QR code. And we have the direct link in the chat. We're going to have a round of Q&A. And you can write your questions on the Q&A on the bottom of your screen. And now continuing the presentations, I want to pass the floor to our finance director, Marcelo Silva. Please, welcome. Good morning, Ju. Good morning to all our
Agradeço a oportunidade de voltar aqui para falar do encerramento de 2022, quarto trimestre do ano né, de 2022. E os destaques financeiros que estão... Vamos compartilhar a informação sobre o quarto trimestre de 2022 e os financeiros financeiros. Os highlights refletem o trabalho que a Kleber tem dito nos últimos três anos sobre a companhia. Os esforços de continuar crescendo de uma consistente maneira. E crescer consistente, agirando margem, preservando os fundamentos do capital de giro da companhia. Né? que fez com que nós acumulássemos um crescimento de 68% nos últimos três anos. Nós fomos capazes de melhorar o caixa de flow quando nós pudéssemos chegar a 1B revenue nos três anos. Os fundamentos. Os números de crescimento, os fundamentos econômicos. Os números de crescimento e as fundações econômicas permitiram nos crescer, melhorar o EBITDA e ter uma conversão de maior conversão. Então, eu estou falando de uma maior conversão. Uh, last year, this is a combination of work in strategic planning that was aligned. We're looking into growth, but sustainable growth, making the company generate value for shareholders, even in an uncertainty scenario, more unfavorable scenario. Going to financial res uh, results and unities of business, bringing some numbers, we have closed 2022 in 15% of uh, liquid revenue, and we have grown in the last trimester 19.3 on the fourth trimester of 2021. We could improve growth and improve the margin of the company. On the first meeting of the market, We had some challenges to accommodate the cost of supplies. The reflex of COVID that we were dealing. The challenges that we had, we had to preserve the margin without losing competitiveness. Working internally to be efficient on the reduction of costs for operation, being efficient in the administration operation to have better cash flow and keep the strategic agenda for P and D to launch products. Clever had many launches that were done in 2022 that were regarding that job that reflects investments of previous years. Given the time that's necessary to perform uh, to develop products, we had the price in a correct way, and we looked uh, we looked to show that in our numbers. Production animals, 68% of the results of the company, not just looking to Brazil but international. We had a growth of 14.7% and we've grown 19% on the fourth trimester. We were showing also our access of the market. We reached almost 4,000 customers per month, generating demand, being on the field, training people, bringing knowledge, looking into productivity. We have important, relevant competitors, but we do our work. And we have a positive impact of new products that can have a bigger impact in 2023. And with that, we could increase gross margin of our production animals and close in 46% against 44.4% of gross margin. Companion animals, this is a segment that we have invested a lot. We, we really think that our thesis is correct of humanization of pets. This is, there's no turning back from that. We have that in 2022. We saw it growing a bit less than previous years, but pandemic had a boom of growth. People were at home. People were working from home. 
2022, these numbers started being uh, starting to be more stable and more normal regarding the pre-pandemic period, but we had relevant growth of 14.1 in 2022. That will reflect a diverse portfolio. And we were doing strong work with Mexico that tests, attests the quality of our products. We have grown in a relevant way. We have grown it was slight below the gross margin of 69.7 in 2021 because of the investments of introduction of new products in the market. Operações internacionais é um pilar importante da nossa estratégia de crescimento que traz além traz como vantagem, né? A... An important pillar of growth. Possibilidade que a receita dolarizada que nos traz um red natural. It's a, a possibility of revenue. It's part of our acquired solution. It's not um, from abroad. Our focus is Latin America. We have local in Latin America. We're looking to keep growing in local currency, expanding commercial operations, looking into our products. And we had a negative impact when converting. In Colombia, there was a devaluation of currency, Mexico as well. And the operations in local currency started growing less, but we are still growing in local currency in those two countries. Regarding profit and gross margin, we had a loss of 63 to 52.8, reflecting the variation of currency. The loss in currency is reflecting in less uh, in, in, in reals. But we also are having more relevant presence and we are increasing market coverage, launching new products. This is the commitment of the company to keep growing. Changes in policies. This won't change the dynamics and the potentials of the market that are attractive to our business. In regarding the expenses, the total expenses, commercial and administrative expenses, we had a expenses of 13 and a revenue of 15, but at the end of last year, we had a uh, mandatory adjustment of uh, salaries that was high and after the board approval, we had the approval of incentives in the long run for administration that increased costs. This regarding the effect of that, we could increase, we, we could increase the paychecks. And we had an improvement in growth and we could dilute the SDNA of 25 for a small uh, step to 27.3% to 27.3% in The agenda of P&D was heated in 2022. We invested 79.6 million. And I don't want to repeat what Kleber has said. But besides launching new products, we launched our relevant agenda of biologicals, producing pilots to do official tests to register at MAPA. We're going to keep the same agenda for strategic growth of the company. Em 2022, cresceu 20%. Nós atingimos 207 milhões de bits ajustados, né? Um crescimento bastante. The EBITDA has been adjusted. It was an important growth. Isso reflete o crescimento da companhia com ganho de margem bruta. And this reflects the growth of the company 
Stephanie e Schwan Salvastianei. Os gastos com pesquisa e desenvolvimento. Então, essa foi sempre a nossa é, missão. De to help with the expenses and development, we want to grow, generating margin and having better margins and speeding up with research and development. An important point and being a, a company that generates a cash flow. We have a robust cash flow. We had 160 million. We have converted. And we have, we have converted a lot and 73%, more, 41% more than last year. We had an acquisition of 14.5 million. We kept our liquidity. And our operational cash flow generation were very, was very robust and relevant. Not just because of the growth of the company, but because we could keep uh, the cash flow, payment deadlines. This was a strategy of the company and very favorable. We could have an important uh, generation of cash in 2022. Another important point of our stra strategy is to have conditions that will allow the company to keep investing that in a scenario that's not fa favorable. We have spent 2022 leveraging company. We closed uh, deleveraging. We had new FINEP operations. We're looking to cash flow in a context of interest rates that were more elevated. In a Selic rate, of 13.75. And this is adequate for our development. It has better maturation. Products will take longer from the conception until financing. And we will have condition of financing cash flow for our organic, organic growth. And that fell from 47%. And we could improve 15% even from 2022. More information for our capital structure. This is in the long run. So we are still comfortable. Para a gente continuar aqui trazendo boas notícias de lançamento de novos produtos. Eu queria também trazer. importante, porque começamos, terminamos o ano de 22 muito bem, como o como colocou, né? trazendo resultados sólidos de um trabalho de três anos. Né? É, We're doing um... solid work in a three-year work, very robust numbers. We started 2023 in a decided way. But the first semester of 2023 is very challenging. Regarding 2022, it's not really favorable. Regarding credit costs, our customers are in the majority. From retail, climate changes that will affect our business, high production costs. And some uncertainties in the political part, monetary part. We have a scenario in 2023 for the beginning of the year that is more challenging than we would thought for 2022. On the other hand, we have positive points. We have a diverse portfolio in geography and business lines. We are certain to be growing in, in any part of the country. We have a good 
a credit line, good liquidity, robust generation of cash flow and robust capital organization. We are prepared to grow knowing the first trimester will be harder, but thinking the second quarter will be better and believing in the strength of our business and our management. We are strong in the execution of our, uh, of our strategy. And I'm here for Q&A. Thank you, Marcelo. We are going to open this space for Q&A. We don't have any Q&A. I will give you one minute to reflect. If you have any curiosity, we are available. This transmission is being recorded and will be available in our investor website and our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash orofino saúde animal. Passar a palavra então ao Kleber para conduzir esse momento. I will go I'll pass the floor to Kleber to conduct that moment. Bom, é, primeiro, antes de responder, eu queria aproveitar a oportunidade para agradecer o time Orofino. I want to thank the Orofino team. They always have been with us with the challenges. I have a question from Alexandria Saf. Alexandre, obrigado pela sua pergunta. M&A é uma questão que está. Thank you so much for your question. M&A is a uh, issue in our radar. Isso no final do ano bastante quando nós fizemos a aquisição da Regenera. You have commented with the acquisition of Regenera with a biotechnology startup. Divisão animal de companhia com célula tronco e with uh, steam cells. It's STEAM, a product that we are developing in a new technology. We have to present it to veterinarians. You are trying to harvest good results. And although we are starting in our radar, we have to be selective. We know the economy that has a high capital cost and we have to be very assertive we are a company with big access we have a complete portfolio we have the best installations in latin america so we have to be very selective and that means that doesn't mean we're not looking and we're not going to follow good opportunities at that moment we're going to be very centered into doing our steam cell business uh, le being leveraged from 2023 i will move on with the questions we have many I will go to Marcelo while I read that. Existem benefícios fiscais coisas do gênero que preocupam. Tô para voto, vou passar com ele depois eu volto. Obrigado. See with Marcelo about this question regarding M and I just want to add to your question. You talk about high interest rates. The assets are still a paradox. And regarding the tax reform, it depends on how it will be. Started last year in a way, and now we have new elements. ICMS says it would be 
difficult to have expectations. We are hoping there won't be any setbacks for the sector, that, because that's very important for our exportation agenda. This is not specific, it's just a one-time spot. We have Carlos Ferraz. He's asking what is the country in Latin America with better, uh, which is better for expansion. We are investing in Mexico and we're investing in Colombia. Latin America produces 16% of protein in the world. Brazil represents 8% of that. And when we sum Brazil, Mexico, and Colombia, we have 75 of the protein production. We are very positioned in this potential countries. And we have to look into the whole picture. Those were countries that we did not have a strong presence and we are going to start to have, like Chile. Chile has an economy for agriculture, but where we act, we have market and we are registering products in these countries. So we are focusing on all the potential countries. Another question. The company has been quoted for multiple, multiple times a EBITDA. Why do you think it's not acknowledged in the market? Our Reason is because we have a low free float and the shares are are very low. The 57% 50, is in the hand of controllers, 20% in Mitsui, and we have a free flow that's very low. Inclusive... I don't have any uh, questions. Regarding the company, we had a very relevant partner that has ent entered with a good condition of renegotiation. The company has a strong strategic value. We have an anonymous question. With Mitsui, is there any strategy to close it? Given the low for flow vis a vis and the cost of being an open company, what I can say today is that we don't have any indication at that moment for closing capital. Mitsui entered, entered as an open company without any agreement of additional shareholder besides having a director we have the possibility of having a person in this structure this is public is in our reference form and this moment there's no indication at that moment there's another question that's uh, uh, that gossip about using the spaces for uh, vaccination uh, is not going on anymore. Shouldn't we get closer to the government? We have commented that in Brazil we have the best installations to product vaccinations. We have our installations for Aftosa with inactivated vaccinations and we have the the plant that is correct for the pipeline especially for swines and uh, cattle 
não foi possível estabelecermos parcerias. Did not develop. It was not possible to establish partnerships. And it's very uh, limited. We could not signal any commitment regarding that. We could foresee the national plan of vaccination and we don't know where vaccinations are going to come. We have installations, we are always open for partnerships, strategic alliances, but currently we don't have this way established. So we have another question. I think it's from Caio Leal. Congratulations for 2022 results. We have R&D research for about 2022. Thank you for your question, Caio. We understand that uh, technology-based company as for animal health must uh, keep having innovation in the pipeline. We are developing relevant vaccines. We had important advancements with several pilot projects ended up. We are in the lab phase now, and we understand that we have a space to, to fill up this room and have more solutions. The investment must keep up at the same pace between 7 and 7.5% 7 of our revenue. There is another anonymous question here about uh, Mitsui acquisi acquisition. By Mitsui, the transa transaction price was released, wasn't released, and they are asking if we are going to do so in any moment soon. So the price is restricted to the stakeholders involved in the transaction. It's not public so it won't be released in any moment i'm afraid i think there is another question here that i skipped let me try to find it yes by alexandria saf as well considering that uh, the the pet margins are higher than the other ones can we focus on it yes we have this focus we understand not only the margin part when we look at our um, growth drivers we understand that the pet area is increasing people getting married uh, later on adopting pets uh, we have less families and making that the longevity of uh, pet increases and the market is increasing, is expanding. This is a huge uh, opportunity. We have total focus on that. We have several launches for pen, pets and we are developing a vaccine pipelines that represents a substantial part of this market share. And we have a patent, a patent uh, product in vet market. It's uh, for cats and dogs and we are developing it we are waiting for the patent of that it's focused uh, on ticks and uh, fleas uh, prevention and maybe that's the pathway to explore the synergies by that matsuya brings and mind you we are not going to lose our vocation in latin america for prediction of proteins and we will keep up strong we are strong in animal production as well and we see uh faster growth for pets in the future i think that the questions are over aren't they so i'll go back to juliana so that we can go to the wrap-up part Thank you, Kleber. Uh, thank you very much for your participation throughout this morning, your kindness to follow our gathering, our meeting, and understand our results. This recording will be available at our RI website and also in our YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com. Uh, slash orofino.com.br. We have our 2022 reports. Okay, feel free to access and get to know all this work that we have developed. And I'd like to invite you to follow our LinkedIn 
page ou o fino saúde animal, that's an environment that you can get to know our daily activities internally and we share our management practices as well. Thank you very much for being with us. Once again, Kleber, your final remarks, please. Well, as Marcelo said, we've had uh, weathered hard years, first year COVID, second year of COVID, high inflations, supply chain increase, logistic price increase. We've been delivering good results so far, and uh, uh, the first quarter is a little bit tighter, and we are looking at a very good growth for 2023 as the other years have been. I'm sure that we have the best team in the market, the best utilities, portfolio. We are in a growing market with a positive drivers. We wrap up 2022 regarding the results and uh, earnings of revenues. We are very confident to have a very good year ahead. We have a very good planning. Fundamentos em propósitos, em valores. We have a good basis in proposals, values. Thank you very much, everyone. All the teams, investors, our investment bodies who support us all the time. Thank you very much. Our uh, um, funders, customers, partners, stakeholders. And we keep on fighting here, trying to add as much value as possible to all investors. Thank you very much, everyone.